Hi, everyone. Good evening. My name is Beth Boudreau. I'm the Director of Professional Education and Training at Navident. Welcome. This is part two of a three-part series, the Navident version 1.4 New Features Training. And part two, we're covering enhanced planning and viewing functions. Part three will be next Tuesday night, which will cover enhanced calibration and navigation functions. Um, we're using this vehicle, this live webinar, because we want to give everyone the option of asking questions throughout this series um, of training. So as you can see in the chat box, please type in your questions as we go along. We have built-in time to address them, and we feel that this is one of the best ways that we can transfer knowledge and you can learn. So we look forward to your questions. Our speaker tonight is Dr. Ido Bermanis. Most of you know Ido. He's the clinical director for Navident. He brings 13 years of practicing dentistry. He also obtained a master's degree in biomechanical sciences. His research thesis focused on the development of an innovative CT-based 3D biomechanical model of the human mandible, which was designed for orthodontic research. So without further ado, I'll turn this thing over to Ido. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate your being here. Hi, guys. Good evening. Um, OK, so in our webinar this evening, we'll go through some uh, new modifications that we have did uh, with the software. So let me first share my screen. And I will go through um, several enhancements that we did. Some of them relate to the uh, importation of a new scan. Uh, other thing is marking the nerve canal. Uh, some enhancements that were done to the panoramic view, implant planning, and finally the uh, 3D view. So uh, let's just start. And at the end, uh, anyone that wishes to ask a question or would like me to go again over something, you're most welcome to do so. Um, so I'll, first of all, I'll start Navident. And in the last webinar, uh, I was talking about it, but uh, I might repeat it this time. Now when we start Navident, we get this message um, that reminds us that the video recording isn't active in case, of course, that we deactivated this option in settings. So uh, it just gives us the chance to, uh, to be aware of that and enable it if we still would like to have the screen recorded in Avident. In this case, I will click no because I don't want to record the screen now. And I will import our good old friend uh, GV Black. I will import it from the uh, desktop. And importation is done as usual. You can see here, by the way, in the, uh, let me show it here. Here in the scan uh, side, uh, there's an extra button for the media viewer that we discussed the last time. I will click the import and load. So the um, data is imported into Navident, as always. Registration is done as usual. And now I will be asked to confirm the registration to verify that it's accurate. This is the same as before. And now there is an extra screen that I'm presented with right after I confirm the registration. And it asks me to verify that there are no motion artifacts. So as we all know, motion artifacts are caused by uh, movements of uh, the object or the patient during the scan. Sometimes if there is uh, too much motion, uh, it can negatively affect the accuracy of the navigation. Uh, you will, of course, have to, to do the uh, accuracy check as always. But keep in mind that if you have found any uh, uh, Motion.
I really cannot no sound. Your mic. You will have to excuse me for a second. Yeah, we're working on it. I can see Chris's. The, sound. the issue is with me or. Um, All right. Say a few words, Ito. Sorry? You can hear you. You can hear me? Yes. Okay, so I can uh, proceed? Please. Okay, thanks. So, um, yeah? Okay. Yep, go ahead, Ian. Um, Sorry about that. Yeah, I just see the messages when I'm when I share my screen, so uh, you will just have to to let me know in case that there is any issue. So uh, motion artifacts uh, they are characterized by uh, duplication of the teeth uh, outline, as we can see, uh, for example, here uh, and here, or ghost imaging, as as uh, we call it. And usually we will not see them uh, through the whole of the data set. And this is due to the fact that uh, the CT scan takes uh, several seconds to, to complete. And usually the patient will not move through the whole scan, but, um, but at a certain point, and we will see these motion artifacts uh, at the places in the scan where the patient has moved. So it is really recommended to scroll through the, the scan and really look for these um, motion artifacts. Once we've, uh, we've, we've scanned the scan, we can click Verify. And then we're, again, in the same uh, familiar screen. And the first thing that we would like to do is to verify that the uh, jaw center line curve that is marked in light blue is indeed marked correctly, and the most obvious sign for that would be the panoramic view. So um, I would like, just like to take this opportunity to mention, especially since this webinar is being recorded and later can be watched by uh, other users, um, the accuracy of navigation will not be affected by uh, the look or the appearance of the panoramic view. The panoramic view is actually a reconstruction that is based on that, uh, let's zoom out here, on the axial view. The panoramic uh, uh, view is based on the, uh, this jaw center line curve. Um, if the jaw center line curve is not marked correctly, then uh, the panoramic view would look uh, odd. And the influence that will be shown on that view, uh, we will not get, we will not see their uh, uh, actual position. But in the, the other views, which the navigation is actually based upon, and the planning as well, we will have the, uh, uh, an accurate uh, planning and uh, navigation. But in any case, since we scroll along this uh, uh, curve, we would like to have it uh, marked correctly. So in this case, I will click the redraw curve. And now you can see here that the red line over here on top of the uh, 3D image is representing the uh, level of this axial section. We can scroll as, as before. This is not, not something new. The only new thing here is that if I tilt this 3D model, I can see the uh, axial section superimposed on that. So I will simply uh, scroll down to the level about the mid root level, where usually I will mark my, um, my jaw center line curve. And I will mark that as usual. Now, another, uh, another thing, keep in mind that the first and last point that you mark 
This will determine the lateral margins of your panoramic view. And then I will confirm. So now you can see we have a nice panoramic view. Um, that's for the panoramic and the uh, jaw center line curve. Another uh, new option that we have now, we actually used to have it before, but at a certain point we, uh, we did it, is the uh, draw nerve canal, the, the next step. So if I click now on the draw nerve canal, I'm presented with the 3D image, with the cross-sectional image that is, you can see it also um, here, superimposed, and the panoramic view. So if in the former version we could mark the uh, nerve canal only on the panoramic view, in this version we can do the marking simultaneously on both views, the panoramic as well as the cross-sectional. Uh, usually what I like to do um, is simply scroll. In, in order to get to, to the first point, I would like to mark a scroll in the uh, cross-sectional view until I find the uh, mental foramen. That's a nice, distinct feature. And then I can place the first dot marking the, uh, the mental foramen itself. I can also um, reduce here the brush size or increase it. Um, the first point will be marked here over the cross-sectional view. You can see the point here as well as in the panoramic view. I can now scroll uh, distally. Here I will mark the next point. And I can continue marking it. For example, okay, let's mark it in here. And then I can mark it also here and continue on both views. For example, I, I can switch again, move here, continue scrolling. The canal is very distinct over here in the cross-sectional and place the mark here and so on, as long as they keep proceeding in one direction. And click Done. Um, a new feature that we have uh, concerns the navigation uh, on the um, on the scan and using the panoramic view. So uh, we now have these uh, two dashed lines in green and in red that intersect in the middle of the uh, panoramic view. The green dashed line is uh, represented also here in the axial section view and in the tangent view and is actually shown in the cross-sectional. So if I hover with my mouse over that line, I'm getting this, uh, these arrows here. And then I can simply grab the line by uh, holding down the mouse left key. And I can drag it back and forth. So you can see that the cross-sectional view, if you would look at its location in the uh, axial view, will move along the jaw center line curve. The tangent view will keep changing at the same time. In the same manner, if we look at the uh, dashed red line that is represented also by these dashed red lines uh, over here in the two uh, views here, and is actually shown here in the axial section view, I can grab it in the same manner and quickly drag it up and down the scan. If I place my cursor anywhere in the panoramic view and I right click, the intersection will jump to that uh, position. If I left click, it jumps back to the center. Um, another option that we have now is concerning the influence planning. If before, when we added an implant, we had this large panoramic view that would appear in the center of the, um, of the screen, we don't have it uh, any longer. So now when I want to add an implant, I will click here on the Add Implant button. And then I simply move the mouse. And as the cursor enters one of the two-dimensional views, it can be either the panoramic 
or the axial or the other two uh, views I presented in an implant, and I can drop it in each one of these windows. And then I can start maneuvering it. Now, you can see that the first implant that I've added is numbered as number one. Uh, these numbers are not used to number as, as teeth numbering, but rather to identify each implant by, um, we call it a name. Uh, the second implant that I will add will be numbered as two and so on. Um, another option that we have is here, just uh, to the right of the data button. If I click on this small arrow here, I can save a bookmark. A bookmark is like uh, a treatment plan. It will simply save uh, what you currently see, a plan that you, can, you currently see on the screen. So then you can, for example, find two implants and save a bookmark. So I simply click on Save Bookmark. So I get here bookmark one. I can, for example, now add another implant on the patient's left. You can see that it is numbered as number three. The reason that it is red is that it's too close to the nerve canal. And I can save, uh, save it as a bookmark. And then it will get the name bookmark two. I can also rename these bookmarks. For example, if I place the cursor on top of that, I can click rename, and I can call it, for example, uh, treatment plan one. And then I can also uh, delete bookmarks simply by clicking the uh, delete. Now, in any case, what you have is, for example, I will now add another implant. So now I have a plan that is different from uh, bookmarks one and two. It will still be automatically saved, but not as a bookmark. So the next time you will, if for example, now I close Navident and I load scan the next time, I will get this screen with this uh, treatment plan. And I will still have on the side, if I will go here, I will still have these two other treatment plans. Now, if, for example, I remove an implant, let's remove here implant number four, and I will add now a new implant, it will be numbered as five. So each implant has its own uh, number. So in case that you plan a, a treatment plan and you, you see that you are left with implant number three and five, uh, there's nothing wrong about it. That's the way you probably, at a certain point, deleted some implants. Uh, other, the other thing I would like to uh, show, you've probably seen it by now, is the tool strips that uh, are uh, much larger by now. So it makes them uh, easier to use. We have here this, uh, this icon here, the uh, toggle patient info. If you take a look at the upper right corner of the panoramic view, you can see the patient's detail. If I click this button once, uh, these are hidden now. I click it for the second time, so all the rulers that you see in the windows will disappear, like that, and also the uh, dimension. I click it again, they will reappear. Another nice feature that we have is in these two windows, we can uh, roll around an implant. So if I drag, simply hold down the mouse left key and drag left or right, the whole scan turns around the implant, so I can inspect the, uh, the bone around an implant, select the implant. And we also, if you take a close look at the, uh, here at the bottom right corner in each one of the uh, views, we have replaced a small uh, person image, the small dimensionless that we used to have, with this uh, new, uh, new head more representative of what we deal with. Um, and that brings us to the uh, last part of uh, this webinar today, 
the 3D uh, view. You can probably see now that there are um, these handles, same as we have here in the other views. We now have the mode twin 3D view. So I will maximize the view now. We now have the option of actually planning in the 3D, directly in the uh, 3D. So if I zoom out, you can now see the implant, and I can tilt an implant in 3D. Now the motion will always be on, of course, on the plane. Uh, it's a 3D image, but it's still on 2D. So the motion, any any movement that I will do or uh, tilting, will be done on the plane of the screen. So if I'm looking from the anterior to the posterior, then tilting would be done in the buckolingual plane. If I will turn now the model and we'll look at it from the side, and let's, okay, now selection of the implant. Okay, here I selected an implant. Right now it is zoomed into the implant, so I will zoom back out. If now in, I'm looking at the model from the side and I tilt an implant, it will be tilted in the mesiodistal uh, plane. Now another nice feature that we've added, let me just zoom out, is the cookie cutter. The cookie cutter is this um, knife tool. If I click on it, I'm, I, the cursor turns into a knife, and then I drag the mouse around. I, I would like now to get rid of this uh, thing that was laid over the patient's teeth. So I simply mark a line around it. I delineate it. You can see that it's now circled with a, a thin, um, with a thin light blue line. Now if I right click, it will cut it out. It actually masks it out. And then if I tilt the model, I can get a nice clear view of the uh, occlusal plane. I can do it with other parts of the, of the scan, of course. Now, if I want to uh, bring it back to to show to show what what I've cut out, I right click. Again, I right click on the tool, sorry, and it reappears. Right clicking again will cause it to disappear again. So uh, this is pretty much what we wanted to go over through this uh, webinar. And you're most welcome now to ask questions or uh, if anyone wishes, I can uh, repeat any demonstration. So uh, I will return it now to you, Beth, and hopefully I can, I can even hear you. Sorry, I was muted. Now is the opportunity. If you have any questions or any thoughts, uh, please type them in, and Ida will answer your questions as best as you can. Mm -hmm. um, any comments? So we have one. A thank you. Thank you, yeah. <laughs> Very nice. You're most welcome. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess we'll call it a night then. Um, if anything comes up, you can always email us or wait here comes something. Oh, thank you. Well, you're so welcome. Okay. <laughs> thank you, guys. All right. Thank you very much. And again, this has been recorded, so it will be on our website probably in a few days. Um, and then part three will be next Tuesday night, and we'll be looking at how to flip the panoramic view, how to calibrate any tool, and also support for zygomatic implants. So thank you very much. It was great to uh, see you all, and have a good night. Thanks. Good night, everyone.